Dr. Morton's Torturous Exercises for the Double Bass is a classic, and it's a book that I have used for years and years, ever since I was a teenager. The exercises cover all sorts of different left-hand and right-hand techniques, and it is in a new edition available in our sheet music store, which you can check out in the link below. Let's dig in and chat with Mark about this book, and I'll show you how I use these exercises in my own practicing. featured Mark's music and many other composers in our weekly DBHQ newsletter. If you are not on our list, consider subscribing. We've got a link in the description below. It's a great way to stay connected with the bass community. The uh, torturous exercises are also now available, and those are um, uh, 31 exercises, really calisthenics. They're not really etudes in that they don't really make any attempt to be some sort of music. In other words, they're not really written in a tonality, for example, it's really just physical calisthenics, and they're very, very demanding, but I think that they really cut to the chase into learning um, uh, technical uh, issues like velocity, string crossings, blurs, vibrato, tone. Uh, uh, Dr. Morton can, can give you his prescription of what torturous exercise you need <laughs> for just about anything that ails you. Um, but that book has been entirely uh, translated into Spanish as well, and so I'm excited to make that uh, available to the yeah. rest of the Americas. Mark's influence in the bass world has been tremendous, and as I was preparing this video, one of Mark's former students, Josh Hadfield, wrote in to me with just some reminiscences about working with Mark and the torturous exercises and just all of his materials. Thought it was really cool, so I'll drop that right here for you to check out. Thanks for writing, Josh. So Longbow on the Bridge is all about developing sound close to the bridge exercise as art. <laughs> Maybe nobody's favorite thing to practice, but so useful for developing your forte dynam dynamic and just your capacity in general on the bass. We're going to play extremely close to the bridge, really one to five millimeters away from each other. And the longbow fingerboard exercise, we're going to play well above the end of the fingerboard. So we're playing near the absolute edges of the available palette of tone colors on the double bass. So once you learn to play near these edges, everything in between of your palette of colors, the, the sounding point, everything in between on the string is going to be much easier. And just like his other materials, he is making this more accessible to people throughout the world. There is an entire Spanish edition of this book. We will have that linked up in the description below as well. And there are many different ways to approach all of these because they are quite different as you go through. He does have them grouped. So you have your tone exercises, you have your vibrato exercises, your left hand velocity, your shifting, your on the string bowing, your off the string bowing, on and off the string bowing, staccato and string crossing, and then miscellaneous. So choose your own adventure. You could do one from each category. That's a good approach and just keep track of it. I just mark it off on my iPad. You could take an entire category for the week. Or if there's one skill you feel just needs some development, find the exercise for that skill and just hone it in. Again, really great descriptions from Mark throughout this book. So whatever you're working on, it will give you the purpose. It will give you some suggestions. It'll give you musical examples, it will give you visuals, uh, further learning, and all kinds of good stuff. The purpose of the vibrato scales exercise is to learn to change left hand fingers while remaining in the same position, to shift on the same finger, and to shift from one finger to another while having little or no interruption in the vibrato. So I'm going to turn to the side so you can easily see the vibrato motion. The way this exercise works is we're going to play a scale doesn't matter what kind of scale, major, three forms of the minor, chromatic, doesn't matter. All the way up one string and then back down again. We're going to play each pitch twice and then slur into the new pitch. The first thing you need to do is to play this scale entirely with just the same finger all the way up. So, for an example, I'm going to play A major on the G string entirely with the first finger. While, of course, Maintaining the vibrato all the way through. That is the point. All right, now I'm going to play as an example um, on the D string 
an E natural minor scale. Uh, with the third finger, yes, we're going to practice doing the vibrato on the third finger. All four fingers, one, two, three, and four. So here we go. on all four strings. Then you want to go back and use a more normal, practical fingering for playing this scale. So uh, we can play uh, two notes per position, shifting every other pitch. All right, so for example, I'll play a B major scale on the A string, and I'm going to shift on the third, and then the fifth, and then the seventh of the scale. Here we go. shift now on the second and the fourth and the sixth degree of the scale. Why not? I'm going to play an F sharp major scale on the E string. Shift. exercise looks a lot like the elbow wrist shift and the truth is you can combine this exercise of maintaining the vibrato all the way through the shifts on the um, elbow shift exercise also the wrist shift exercise and the elbow wrist shift exercise so I hope that all of these exercises will improve your vibrato and give you the ability if you choose to be able to maintain your vibrato all the way through every note, especially the end of the note. That's where uh, it's the most difficult. Elbow shifts, this is very useful. <laughs> the purpose of the elbow shifts exercise is to acquire smooth, quick, efficient, secure, and accurate shifts in the lower register. So the way this exercise works is that we're going to be playing a pentachord, in other words, the first five notes of a scale. We're gonna play each pitch twice and then slur into the next note in the scale. And we're gonna do this entirely on one string, on each of the four strings. Now I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see my shifting motion uh, more clearly. Uh, so. We're going to do this entirely on each of the four fingers, entirely on the first finger, second finger, yes, third finger, and the fourth finger. So here's what we don't want to do. You don't want the hand to lead the shift. The hand doesn't go first. It's actually the elbow goes first. And then it, it whips the hand into place. The truth is we need a motion before that. We need a preparation motion so that when our hand is going down on the bass, up in pitch, the, the elbow needs to do a preparation motion up and then down, up and then down. Now what gets a little bit tricky is on the descent, the elbow has to go down, then up, down, then up. So here we go. third finger E minor on the D string. Now, of course, playing the scale entirely with the same finger is very impractical. Let's use a fingering that is more likely a fingering that we would use for a scale. So I'm going to play now two notes to pitches rather per position and for example I'm going to shift on the third note and the fifth note so I'm going to play B major on the A string so I go and then 
I should also practice this uh, pentachord shifting on the second note and the fourth note. You may have noticed that this exercise looks a lot like the vibrato scales exercise. And the truth is you can combine these two exercises. So you can execute the elbow motion in the elbow shifts exercise while maintaining vibrato. So as an example, I'm going to play uh, F major pentachord on the E string uh, and then I'm going to be shifting on the second and the fourth notes with the bravo. So, I hope you enjoy this exercise and that it gives you a lot more fluidity, ease, and security while doing shifts. Then we're getting into all these different bow strokes and getting into off the string strokes. This reminds me of what I practice in college a lot. One position scales are great. And this is something that he gets into quite a bit of detail in, in his Miraculous Scales book, which we also have available in our sheet music store. And even developing pizzicato technique, really a useful book from Mark Morton. I love the title, Torturous Exercises. I remember getting a chuckle back many decades ago when I first discovered this book. And it's so cool that we have this available. Uh, check it out and we'll see you in the next one.